So what I'm going to start with is how to make a home for the solitary bees. A lot of people think of think of bees and just think of honeybees. Now they're really important too, and I love my honey, especially local produced honey. Um, I like all the different flowers and different flavors you can get from it. But actually, there's a lot more varieties of bees out there. I'm, my memory serves me correct. There's over 250 types of bee, um, over 20 types of bumblebee in this country, um, and there's lo lots of them. Uh, the other bees are solitary bees. They don't live in big swarms. Uh, they might live in few numbers, um, or they might lay their eggs and, and move on. But I love I love seeing them come out of their little homes. So you might see in the uh, garden centres the little uh, bamboo created homes and stuff like that. And you suddenly notice that they might be filled up with soil and you're like, well, why is that? Have I dropped it on the floor? No, that's actually potentially a mason or a minor bee has gone in there, laid its eggs. And then as it's um, laid an egg, it's filled it up and then filled it up and then filled it up and then sealed the front. And then suddenly um, you'll see them hatch out. And it's an amazing thing to know that you're supporting these. Now, these types of bees are even better for pollinating for our uh, fruits and vegetable and our uh, production because actually they're really messy. They're a bit like, like me. The honeybee has got these lovely little sacks it tucks pollen in nice and neatly on the side of it. But these uh, solitary bees, a lot of them are more messy. And when they're in there um, on the nectar and, and touching up the pollen, uh, <laughs> whoops, uh, they basically, uh, it sticks to their bodies. Um, and so when they go in to visit another flower, another plant, it ends up spreading around and, and you get pollination from that, um, which is fantastic for us as growers. Um, it's also fantastic for other animals who eat those other plants and live off those other ecosystems. So, yeah, let's make a home for them. So, Lou, I'm having to use things I've managed to find around the house or in the garage. So, first of all, you're going to need yourself a plastic bottle. This is to keep the materials dry inside because the bees don't like making a home in soggy mess. I know bumblebees will be in the ground, but preferably they don't want to be fl uh, flooded in water. So, first things first, let's make a drainage hole in the bottom of the bottle sharp pair of scissors in there so be careful because you're pushing down on the curved surface now let's just make another hole this is where we would put a string or a wire through and one at the top end so it can come out the other end and this will be used to thread a string or wiring to make a hook so how we do it is we'll put the string or the wire through and then we'll give it a twist at the top and we'll all put a little hook in it so that we can then hang it into a tree or off a branch now we won't be able to get access from the outside so what we're going to need to do is chop the end off. Now we want the bottle to be protecting at least maybe up to 6 inches worth of dry material inside. So this bottle is just over 6 inches up to where the neck starts curving in. So we'll just cut in at this point. So as we're cutting in we're using these small scissors and we're just going to cut round in a straight line. It's a little bit sharp on the edge so it's best if we use a bit of tape just to protect this from any scrapes or cuts. So obviously we're using small bits of masking tape here but you could use something like electrical tape because they come in much more funky and fun colours. So now I've got this all protected, remember I want, if I would want to put a, something to hang this then I would poke it through now because I can reach in, poke it back through this hole and put it through. Um, if I don't want to hang it I might want to rest it somewhere, uh, I might want to make some little little feet for it um, or just find some little stones that stops it from rolling around. Um, so this is the basis of the home. This is the frame. So while we're taking a pause on the indoor bug home, let's have a look at what's going on, on the outside. So what you've seen so far is I've found some waste timber. I've measured it out about 20 centimeters in length and I've used a new bench hook that I've made for a youth video and I just chopped it up. So now I've got four pieces that are now 20 centimetre in length. I'm just about to um, drill in some pilot holes. So when I screw it together, there's less likely to split or anything in the wood. So to mark out these pilot holes, I need to first think about what I'm actually screwing it into. So I'm measuring out the thickness of the wood. So now I'm just drilling through it. Three holes on each piece just inside that line. Last one now. Now I'm just taking off any rough edges with a bit of sandpaper where I've just been doing the drilling. So now I just want to put those three screws in. As I'm doing this, some of them need a little bit of a pilot hole into that piece of wood we're going to screw into just to reduce any splitting with this really dry wood. So now it's just putting all the sides together, three screws in each side. Now 
notice I'm overlapping the sides this is just so that I keep it nice and square now I've got to consider the back because the bees don't like a hollow tube with the wind blowing through it I found an old bottom of a drawer so I'm just using the, the bench hook now just to saw this little square bit out that will fit on the back of it that'll mean the bees will be able to access it from one side just to affix this just going to take a bit of uh, the rough edges off going to get myself a bit of PVA glue running along the edge and I'm actually going to use some uh, pin nails just to affix it down the sort of pin nails you'd find in IKEA furniture when you're attaching the back of the wardrobe or a set of drawers to the frame so just putting a few pin nails around the outside concentrating first on the corners then the last few will just be into the centres of the sides So just like with the plastic bottle, I've created myself a wooden structure now that will keep the materials inside dry and we can move on to think about what we're going to actually fill this up with ready for those bees to, to move in. Now I'm going to start filling it. Now I can find things in my garden. I'm looking for hollow stems or stems that can be hollowed out. Um, in my garden, I've found some of them. But if you haven't got that, don't worry. I'll show you something that you will probably have in your house. So out in my garden I found some hollow stems of plants I've been chopping back. I found this massive bramble in my garden and when I chopped that back I found it's got a beginning of a hollow. It's got a wider end hollow at this end. And what I found with the solitary bees, uh, whatever ones try and occupy these stems is they're looking between 6 and 12 millimetres in sort of diameter hollows. And it's within these that they're going to lay their eggs and then backfill them with the mud, etc. on it. I can't put the sticks in at this length, so what we've got to do is measure them up, make sure they fit inside our plastic container, which measures about 17 centimetres. So if we make them about 15 centimetres, we know that they're not going to drag the rain in or cause any problems. So let's measure out our sticks. We can measure them out and mark them. I'm demonstrating the marking here, but what we'll end up doing is just chopping them to roughly the right length. As you can see on the other video, I'm just going through processing a huge amount of sticks to fit into this very large container. I'm just placing the sticks inside the plastic bottle. You can see one end is at the sealed end and the other end is facing outwards, which the bees will like. So. I've run out of those sticks which I brought indoors so I'm going to use an envelope to make the rest of them up. This is a really simple technique so what you need is a good sized pencil and you're just going to place it on one end of the envelope and roll it along that envelope. Making sure you don't do this too tight because you're going to be able to get that pencil out at the end. When you get to the end all you're going to need to do is just a little bit of tape, preferably masking tape because it makes it easier to undo it later on in the season. So just a little bit of masking tape just to secure those envelopes into the roll. And you've got yourself a nice little hollow tube that you've made. Now you can fill this up with as many as you want. So literally watch again. It's an envelope rolled around the pencil. Now bear in mind you get pencils of all different shapes and sizes. So it can give you the variation in the tubes. Get to the end. Don't forget to tape it. This just holds it a bit secure. Okay, so while I'm doing that, let's just quickly watch back on the other video. As you can see, I've got a bit of a faster technique here. I've put the tape measure out so that I've got my, my 20 centimetres marked out on the tape measure. It makes cutting all the sticks to the right size a lot quicker, and it means I'm going to do less second cuts, which is what was slowing me down initially. So I'm just processing all the wood I can, dropping the pieces on the floor, and then it'll be a lot quicker to put them back inside it. So if we're looking back at the, the plastic bottle bee home, the reason I'm using these uh, paper tubes is that one, they're really easy to recycle things from in the house and two, when you know that they've been filled up because they've had their ends plugged you'll know that there's larvae inside and you can open it up and check on them and equally if there's been any sort of predator wasps trying to lay their larvae in so that they eat the bee larvae as food then you'll see this by lots of little sort of holes along the lines and you can go in there and remove the predator larvae if you so wish 
but what you might want to do is then make sure that predator larvae isn't in with all the others. So now to finish both of these bee homes off, it's just to pack them full of tubes and then place them on the sunny spot so they get the morning sun.